Hello friends, it's your boy BB and I hope you're having a great day. Today we'll play the game between Fabiano Caruana and Magnus Carlsen in the Tata Steel Open. Tata Steel is one of the most important uh, live chess tournaments in the world. It's around 10 and uh, we're gonna show this game from round 10 because of course when number one in the world and number two in the world play each other, uh, it's, a, it's a clash and of course of course, we, we all want to watch this one. In the previous nine rounds, uh, Anish Giri, Alireza Firuja and Fabiana Caruana are leading the tournament with an equal score. E each one have six. And then uh, Magnus is trailing behind because he lost against Estipanko in round nine. So he, he will try to, 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 to bounce back here against Caruana with the black pieces. Uh, without losing any more time, let's drive straight into this game because it's such an interesting one and features some nice moves. And uh, Fabi here uh, goes uh, goes with with his first move, opens with d4, and then okay, Magnus replies knight f6. Fabi goes c4, and Magnus goes e6 here. And Fabi here decides to go for the Catalan opening with g3. So we have a Catalan on the board. And Magnus here replies with d5. And of course, Fabi continues developing. He goes knight f3. And Magnus goes uh, bishop b4, check. Fabi blocks the check with the bishop. And now Magnus goes back with the bishop to d6. So he doesn't want, he doesn't want to trade pieces yet. And we have, and we have for, from Fabi here uh, f2. He puts his bishop in this nice diagonal and then he, he, he will prepare to castle. And of course Magnus wants to castle too in, in, in his side. And of course Magnus wants to do that but first he goes c6, uh, protects his pawn in the center just in case Fabi wants to capture later and then Fabi goes uh, b3, develops the, the, the second knight and now Magnus castles. And Fabi goes bishop g5. He puts pressure, he pins the knight here, and he puts pressure. Knight can't move because the queen would hang. And uh, Magnus goes h6, asking questions what uh, Fabi is gonna do with his bishop, if he's gonna go back or if he's gonna trade here on f6. And Fabi decides to trade the bishop for a knight. It's not bad uh, in, in, in those positions, especially in Catalan opening. And of course, Magnus goes queen captures on f6. And we have queen b3 from Fabi, he still doesn't prefer to castle, but, but puts pressure in this pawn in, just in case if Magnus wants to develop the bishop, because it's, it's impossible because this pawn would, would hang and then the bishop would be under attack and then this rook would be under attack and then it's gonna be a, a terrible position for Fabi, for Magnus, so uh, he, he should be careful not to, not to blunder the game. And then we have knight d7 from Magnus. The pawn is nicely protected by the bishop, and we have a uh, castle from Fabi. Fine decides to castle, and then the queen e7 from Magnus. He goes back with the queen, and then we have c5 from Fabi. He pushes the pawn. He doesn't want. He doesn't prefer to trade here, but uh, he pushes, and then this bishop uh, attacks the bishop. So Magnus needs to to remove the bishop and goes bishop c7. We have e4 from Fabi, strikes in the center, he wants to open lines, maybe put this rook in the in the e-file, because the queen is it's in the e-file, so let's see. And then we have b6 from Magnus, he doesn't want to trade here of course, because he has a nice contr control on the center, so he, wants, he, he pushes his pawn, maybe he wants to uh, fian fianchetto his light square bishop. And then we have e captures on d5 from Fabi, Magnus recaptures on d5 with the e pawn and then now we have rook f1 as planned tagging the queen and then uh, magnus goes queen f6 because the queen is under attack he must move it and now we have a very interesting move from fabi because uh here magnus have a have a great position so he's gonna put this bishop in this diagonal here he's gonna trade this pawn and then maybe maybe put the rook here and then connects the rooks, so it's gonna be very, very pleasure, pleasure position for Magnus and unpleasure position for Fabi, of course. So he finds a very uh, interesting one here. He goes knight captures on d5. 
So looks like he's giving up a piece, a full knight for a pawn. But uh, let's see what's behind this uh, this move that Fabi played here. Because of course knight is hanging here, the pawn will capture in the next move. Uh, there's no better move for Magnus here because the queen is under attack, so he must capture the knight of course. Uh, and then he goes c captures on d5 and now Fabi goes queen captures on d5. And as we see here, this rook it's under attack, it's undefended and also and also the, after the bishop defends the rook here, this knight would be hanging. Uh, but of also the bishop would be hanging here if, if he develops here, so he must move the rook because there is nowhere he can defend. If he goes bishop here, the queen can just gobble up the bishop and then uh, if bishop goes somewhere, I don't know, like for example here and then uh, the, the knight the knight would be would be hanging here of course so there's not something that uh, that Fabi prefers to do so uh, he goes he he rather in this position after Magnus after Fabi captures captures the pawn d5 Magnus removes the rook and now we have and now we have uh, c6 from uh, from Fabi he attacks the knight and now uh, rook goes to c8 because there is no, no there is no way how to where to send this knight that's why he tries to to protect it this way and then now we have c capture on d7 fabi wins his knight back we have bishop captures on d7 now uh, the, the rook is aligned with with the queen here but there is no good discoveries for magnus for the moment because there is nowhere where this bishop can go that can be dangerous that's why fabi it's not uh, interesting to move the queen for the moment but rather he goes knight e5 he puts pressure on this bishop here you see bishop is attacked twice and it's only defend one time by the rook so uh, of course magnus needs to do something about this so he goes bishop e6 he attacks the queen and now of course uh, fabi goes queen e4 he goes from the bishop's way there and then we have bishop captures on c5 from Magnus. Uh, the, the, that knight there was very dangerous so why not to capture because the bishop here was not doing much so that's he, he did the right move to trade here and we have d captures on c5 from Fabi attacking the queen uh, the queen goes to e7 and we have queen e3 here a waiting move and now b, uh, rook b to c8 so so you see magnus have an excellent control uh, of those two open files on the board c file and d file because as we know we know that we always want to to control the open files on the board but uh fabi is up a pawn so it might be enough for fabi to win this or can magnus hold with the pawn down let's see how it's gonna go so we have bishop e4 from fabi we have Queen c5, he wants to trade queens here, and uh, Fabi obliges, he trades queens on c5, rook captures on c5, and now f4 from Fabi. We have g6, because uh, it's a, it's, it, it, it gives another square for the king to, to move, just in case if it's going to be a back, back rank issues here, because the, this square was, was aligned with the bishop, so he closes closes the the diagonal of the bishop there that's why he moved the g6 and now king f2 from fabi we have a5 for magnus advances the pawn forward and now king e3 fabi uh sends the king uh, closer closer when the action is happening uh because it's the end game so we need to send the king uh, in the center as soon as possible in the end game and now we have a4 magnus goes even forward with the pawn and uh Fabi can't move this rook for the moment because the pawn would hang because the bishop is lined here. That's why he goes rook e to c1 to counter Magnus rook here on the open open c file. And Magnus doesn't want to trade. He goes rook to b5 and we have rook to c2. Protecting the pawn here and we have b4 from uh, Magnus. And now we have uh, b bishop to d3 from Fabi because this bishop was kind of uh, it was protected by the king for the moment. But just in case if the queen the, the king would move, then the bishop would hang here on on e, e4. That's why Magnus moved to d3. And we have h5 from Magnus. 
he advances the pawn even forward and now rook d uh, rook to d2 from fabi we have b5 magnus continues to, uh, to to advance those pawns uh forward and now we have a3 from fabi attacking the rook the rook must move and magnus decides to go to b3 it's the only square where the rook can go in fact uh and now the, the bishop as we can see here it's pinned it can't move because uh it it's gonna be a check then later so the bishop it can't move there uh, it's a illegal move so that's why uh fabi needs to be careful with that so he goes rook to c1 it controls the file here and then we have a b4 from magnus he finds an, a very interesting way because he wants to put the bishop here i'm sorry about that he wants to put the bishop here in this diagonal and then puts another attacker on this bishop that is pinned but he can do for the moment because if he does here if he goes immediately with the bishop here then uh then fabi can just protect with the rook and then there is nothing more here to be done if 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 he decides to trade he will just capture capture and then capture capture and then this is a winning position for 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 fabi of course so magnus doesn't prefer to do this that's why he finds a very interesting move he gives up this pawn so so he can he can uh, th this pawn cannot be here to to, to protect the rook after him he, he puts the bishop in this diag in this diagonal here so fabi of course captures the pawn here and now magnus gives yet another pawn here of course fabi got to capture that, that pawn because otherwise this pawn if he captures here is very dangerous so he captures the other pawn and only now magnus goes to bishop to uh, f5 so this bishop it's uh, overloaded now can't move so uh, fabi got to protect the, the bishop he goes rook c to d1 and now we have uh, we have a simple capture from magnus on e3 so magnus wins the pawn so it's still down a pawn but uh, but the position is is very drollish so we have some more moves here so we have b5 from fabi tries to to go with the pawn forward but g4 tagging the rook here and uh, the rook must move from here otherwise otherwise magnus magnus will just uh, will just grab it so he goes rook to c1 we have bishop to f5 from magnus still uh, loading overloading this bishop here the only move for fabi is to defend back he goes back to defend the bishop to rook to c to d1 we have bishop g4 rook c1 bishop f5 and after rook c to d1 we have a threefold repetition so this is a draw and uh, the players agreed to a draw because it was uh, it was threefold repetition so very nice game Fab fabi found that in move 16 if we go back one more time here move 16 that knight captures on d5 and then uh, after that he was a pawn up and then he puts pressure on, on, on magnus but uh, magnus found those beautiful moves when he he, he gave up he gave up those two pawns for for a uh, winning i mean for a uh, for a draw for a draw and game so this was the game i hope that you enjoy so before before we close this video i just want to to show you the standings after round 10 yeah Ali Reza Firuja draw his game uh, and Anish Giri won the game that he had today so here are the standings Anish Giri is the sole leader of Tata still opening after 10 rounds with 7 out of 10 and we have Essie Penko, Kar Karwana and Firuja with 6 and a half and then Van Forest with six, Magnus is in the sixth place. He's a little bit behind, but you know he's the world champion. The things can happen later, so he can win all his games that are left, and then he can he can win the tournament. But for the moment, he is a point and a half behind of Anish Gear, that is a sole leader. And then Ari Ari Krishna, Pantala Ari Krishna, Grandelius with five. We have Duda, Maxim Vasheri, Agrav that is not doing very well in this tournament, and Rentar with four. Wojtaszek and uh, David Anton with three and a half and Alexander Cheng with three points in the in the last space. So this was uh, this was all for today. Uh, tomorrow I will show you that uh, that wonderful game of uh, Giri that he won today, uh, and then on Friday is gonna be 
the clash battle, the biggest uh, match of the tournament is going to be Magnus Carlsen with Anish Giri. Anish Giri will have the black pieces and let's see if he's going to play his knight or defense or not. Uh, it's going to be quite a match and uh, we're looking forward to that. So I hope you enjoyed one more time. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon in, uh, in the continu continuation of Tata Steel. Thank you and uh, blessings.